Never Alone is a puzzle platformer video game developed by Eline Media, a video game company independently owned by the Cook Inlet Tribal Council. As the first native owned and operated game studio, Eline Media aims to bring traditional native stories into the public eye, as they successfully have done with Never Alone. <laughs> Never Alone is based on Kunuk Sa Yuka, an Inupiaq folktale first told and recorded by Robert Nazaruk Cleveland. What is, perhaps, the game's most unique aspect is its seamless fusion of both auditory and visual aspects of the tundra environment, such as the walls of white snow that accompany the whistling wind, and the creaking of the ice as a bear gallops across it. The authenticity of the experience is emulated down to the smallest detail, with great pains being taken by Impossible Acoustic, the sound studio tasked with orchestrating the soundscape. Every effect heard throughout the game is composed entirely of sounds created by hand, and often directly from the Alaskan wilderness. In unison with this exists the interactive nature that comes of being a video game. As technology progresses, so does our ability to digitally create and share visceral and hands-on experiences. While there are still many improvements that can be made in this realm, Never Alone utilizes a wide range of elements beyond what you can consciously see and hear. Take, for instance, the controller. It vibrates in unison with the deep bellows of the bear, the shattering of the ice, and the punishing impacts that accompany falling on the ice. At an even deeper level of the game structure, you can feel the difference between the girl and the fox. When controlling the fox, every command given by the player is met with a quick and lithe response. The movements of the fox also clearly stand out, as it can be seen leaping from wall to wall as it scampers up a narrow shaft. <laughs> The different movements of the characters are more important than you would first think. Never Alone falls into the puzzle platformer video game genre, meaning that it requires analytical thinking and a fair degree of skill in timing the character's movements, which can be easily disrupted if each one moves uniquely. Additionally, among its compatriots, Never Alone stands out for having a particularly slow pace, which was likely implemented to provide the best storytelling experience. The genre of the folktale itself is an interesting part of the game. By selecting an adventure that, while sad at some points, has a happy ending, the game studio hinted at their desire to share their native heritage in a way that would reach the most people. This is also shown by a number of the game's technological aspects. As of now, Never Alone is available on both PC and Mac, in addition to all of the major game consoles, which is a feat rarely achieved even by multi-million dollar game projects. It can be comfortably said that Eline Media's efforts to increase their game's visibility and accessibility did not go to waste. Not only has Never Alone received glowing reviews from critics and consumers alike, it was nominated for multitudes of Game of the Year awards, and footage of it has been uploaded to YouTube channels that receive millions of views on a daily basis. Access to the game, however, was not the only challenge the studio faced. Prior to beginning the creative process, they first sought Minnie Gray's approval to use the story that her grandfather, Robert Nazareth Cleveland, was attributed with telling for the first time. 
While there were no legal ownership issues with using the story, Inupiaq tradition dictates that one must acquire the permission of the creator prior to telling a story themselves. In addition to receiving permission, it is expected that a storyteller pay homage to the creator, as is done at the end of Never Alone, when the narrator says, I have heard Nazaruk tell the story this way. Eline Media collaborated not only with Minnie Gray, but with a great number of people, many of whom shared their native heritage, and which included several elders, writers, storytellers, impossible acoustics, and an entire team of Inupiaq people dedicated entirely to translating the legend. The translation team was necessary because the studio wanted their adaptation of the legend to be as accurate as possible, and, while the entire game was narrated by an Inupiaq storyteller in the Inupiaq language, translated subtitles were needed if they wanted anyone to understand the specifics of the story. And while the Inupiaq language is not generally regarded as a difficult language to translate, a plethora of challenges always awaits those who desire to share across the language barrier. The success that Never Alone achieved has brought two unique questions out into the open. The first, which is in no way new, is how should video games serve as a storytelling platform? While the interactive nature of games helps the player to forge an understanding of and connection with the character they're playing, I believe that it could also be argued that the high ratio of gameplay to storytelling diminishes the enjoyability of the story. This should not be taken to mean that the presence of a story in a game is a bad thing. By adding a story, the game is improved. However, the impact of the story can easily be lost if, for instance, a certain part of the game is irritating or hard enough that it ruins the player's immersion and they skip the story altogether. The other question, which is undoubtedly new to many people, is whether the media industry, both for games and movies, should look to native folklore for creative inspiration in a market which is saturated with stereotypes and recreations. And subsequently, we also need to consider the wishes of said native communities. Kahon <laughs> Patent. 
Tak tua mun silamu. Tak berat enna nasum unep kagamau tu sanga gigah. 